You remember these cool little 3D printed uh, stage lights that I put together a few months back? Well, I think it's time to give them a few new friends. And to that end, I've gone searching around Thingiverse and I found a couple of actual moving lights. And these ones use servos in them to do the pan and tilt, which seems like a pretty cool idea. So I downloaded this one and this one, and I have done a bit of printing. So let's see if we can put a couple of lights together and uh, have some fun with this. So I think I'm going to do the big one first, just because it's probably going to be a little bit easier to get into. So we have the base, the yoke, which does the uh, pan. We have a little back cover for the base. We have the front of the top and the back of the top. Now in the files, there was two different backs. I printed the one that has an optional servo motor in the back of it, but uh, that I'm finding reading through the documentation, such as it is, isn't actually necessary. It's a future thing that he hasn't fully implemented yet. And the other thing that happened here is when I was cleaning the supports off, I broke the little mounting tabs. So I think just for my experiments here, I'm going to just tape this together, glue it together or something, but we may want to reprint that in the future if this works out. So that goes on there that mounts on there and that mounts on there as i said before so inside this top barrel there's a little notch for one end of a servo motor to go on and there's another notch that matches up with it so your standard little nine gram servo will mount in there let's get that wire out of the way for now actually it's going to have to go out through that hole and then the other tab just goes on there and then there's supposed to be a screw that goes in there into the tab that i broke off but We'll just tape that together for now. So yeah, as I said, the wire goes out the side there, and this is kind of clever. On the side of the yoke, there is this little crescent there that matches up with that crescent there. And the side of the yoke is actually hollow. And that hollow spot comes down to, down to here. So you can run the wires through and since these servos only move through 180 degrees, that should, in theory, if you align them up right, not pinch off the wires. So that's pretty clever. And then down in the base, we can see that there's another mount for a servo there and a little cutout for the wires to stick out there. So this should be pretty easy to put together. There's even a hole there for a screwdriver. Whoever designed this has thought of it, thought things through fairly well, I think. So let's get this first servo mounted in here. And hopefully this goes in fairly easily. You want to pinch the wires doing this. Well, that works pretty well. I think M3 screws will be what's called for here. That ought to do the job. Oh, well, it's not going to do the job. Actually, I think maybe I want some of these smaller self-tapping screws that came with the servos. That might be a better idea. There we go. That's a good place to start. So now then, it looks like this yoke mounts with one of these horns on there, except for it's too long. I'm cut it down. But that's okay. I have plenty of these. Every servo comes with three different shapes and sizes of these things. So that'll go on there, but that hole is huge. Which I don't think it's going to work very well because it needs to accept this tiny little screw that goes in there, which are more of these screws that came with the servos. So that's a small little screw there, but the head of that screw is much larger than that. And this thing is nice and thick too. So I think what I'm going to do is just attach this servo horn with a bit of hot glue and hope for the best. And we should be able to stab that guy down on top of there, put the screw in and well, 
Well, that's a good start. Well, I think I'm going to have to take that off to thread the wires through there. Yeah, probably will. And the next thing to accomplish is this uh, connector won't fit up through that little chassis hole uh, mount thing. So I'll just pop the wires out of the connector from this servo. Just got to lift up the plastic tab just a little bit. Not so much that you deform it, just enough to get it out of the way. And you can pull these pins out. And then we should be able to thread them through there and down through here and catch them out the bottom. There we go. Use enough of the right tools, that's not too bad. I guess I have to come up with some kind of a light for this thing too, don't I, before I get too carried away. Now the guy didn't really make any provision for mounting the light on this, I'm discovering. So... I wonder if we can mount something right up front here. Will that fit? Maybe. Something like that. Uh, what else have we got? These little star-shaped ones. No, that doesn't work. Um, what about these much brighter ones? That doesn't really work either. Oh! I've got these lenses. Will that lens fit in there? Well, that's pretty close to perfect. Okay. Maybe I can put that in there with just a drop of hot glue. But then, as I said, there's no real provision for mounting a light behind there. So I quickly went and tinker catted up some circles, just you know, millimeter thick plastic circles in various sizes from 17, 18, 20, 30, and 35 millimeters. And I think I can fit one of those back in there. It's a little bit distance behind the lens, and I can put an LED on that, I think. And the LED of choice, I think, is going to be a NeoPixel, aka WS 2812 addressable LED. That way I can get RGB out of just three wires instead of needing four for RGB like I normally would. As often happens, things didn't go exactly to plan, but I'm just going to glue this guy in here quickly. Notice that I don't have the lens in there. I may attach it from the outside if I decide that I want to use it. But again, this is just a first test. Um, if this light actually works, or if I like it better than the other one, then I'll probably uh, make a few modifications and reprint it a little bit better. Because I, I just used mostly draft mode on here. And as you can see, I ran out of filament. So I changed colors midway through. So yeah, let's just see how this works before we get too carried away, shall we? Well, that was a bit of a struggle getting those wires through there. I think for the smaller one, I'm going to use skinnier wire than that. So now the next thing we need one of this kind of servo horns to go into this little slot over here. And then the servo itself clicks down into there. And actually, I guess we could probably put that on first and then slide it in there, maybe. Just want to put the servo into its mid-range, I think. I think when we put that on, and actually we want that pointing the other way, this way, so that when that goes on, it's facing that way. Yeah, I think that's what we want. And then screw that through there. That didn't hold. What happened? Okay, new plan. We'll screw this on first. And then mount it in there. Maybe that's what it needs. If I can do it without breaking anything. Okay, there. That is in. It kind of holds, although I think I probably should have glued it in there. 
we'll let it be sloppy for now. And the wires seem to move without getting tangled, so that's good. I think I want to screw through there. Yeah, I think I want to screw through there just because that's flopping. Okay, that'll have to do for now. And then the last bit, run that over that way. And put this on the back to hold that servo in place. That's pretty good. And then because, as I mentioned earlier, the tabs are broken off there, I'm just going to tape that together for now. Yeah, I know, janky. What are you going to do? I might glue it, but I probably want to get back in there a few more times. So this will do for now. And kept on tape holds together half of your electronics anyway, doesn't it? Why not do this too? Okay, now how am I going to get that in there? Hmm. Do you see my dilemma? I can get this to sit down on top of that servo, but I can't get at that screw to put it in anymore. Hmm. I wish this guy had put a little bit more thought into a manual, uh, instructions for putting this thing together. I'm, I'm guessing that it's probably not a completed work. I'm thinking it's still a work in progress, but that looks pretty cool. I think so that works. That works. It's just held together by friction that way, but it works. Let's see if it actually works under power. So I've cobbled together a little uh, sketch here for the Arduino based on, you know, basically just some example sketches that I've abused and whatnot. Uh, servo library, Adafruit NeoPixel library, one LED. It's on pin two. We've got a pan servo and a tilt servo. Uh, some variables, brightnesses and fading numbers. Adafruit stuff straight out of the NeoPixel demo library. Um, and then just a loop to do some, uh, some movement. I'm not sure where I, I cribbed this out of some place. I can't remember where exactly. And then the pixel stuff. So let's fire this up and make it happen. I haven't tried this yet. So let's see what will happen. I mean, I've tried the software and I know it works separate from this, but this is the first time plugging this guy in. Whoa, there it goes. It's moving. And are the colors changing on the LED? Yes, they are. Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, there's a lot rough about this. Um, my printing, my assembly, all the rest of that. And as the guy said in the description on Thingiverse, it is still very much a work in progress. He's got a lot to do yet, but it does the thing. Oh, that is very cool. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a scale for these guys. So I think since it's getting late, I'm going to save this one for another week. Maybe not next week, but uh, another week. And I'll put this one together. So I think it'll be closer to in scale with these guys. But in the meantime, it's a thing and it works. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, questions, comments down below as usual. I will talk to you later. Oh yeah, and because I'm sure somebody's going to ask, uh, tonight's beer has been a little brown jugs stout, just stout. And there's the tasting notes, a smooth and robust stout with chocolate and caramel flavors, but they all come from the brewing process. Just the standard beer ingredients. Nothing fancy going on here. Very nice beer though.